Hey everyone. Hey, it's me. How you doing? You doing good? I literally just took a sip of like four hour old coffee and uh, it's okay. It's okay. You know, when you, uh, when uh, you, you're, you're like at a party and you pick up what you think is your drink that is in a can and you take a sip of it and someone, it was someone's ashtray. Yeah, kind of like that, minus the ash and stuff. But not the best. Not the best at all. So, what are we doing? What are we doing today? Well, after the beautiful bean footage, we'll get into it. But for now, I just want to hang out. I just want to see how you're doing. Mm-hmm. Okay. No. That's pretty interesting. Huh. That is interesting. I had no idea. Huh. Hmm. You sure? You sure that happened? It's a... I'm sure you're sure. But that doesn't sound like them. That doesn't sound like them at all. I would know. Huh. Man, that sucks. But I'm sure you'll figure it out. Alright. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I got it. Yep. No, understood. Totally. Alright. Yep. Hmm. Okay. Well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alright, I gotta run. Alright. Now here's that beautiful bean footage. Welcome back to another episode of Caffeinated CX, where we talk about customer experience and stuff, all in a hyper-caffeinated state. I'm David, the Caffeinated CXO, and I'm your host here on Caffeinated CX, because, well, it's my show. The original. The original Caffeinated CX. The OG. Yeah, going back to, like, 2021. All right. All right, and I got proof of that. So, what was that about? About nothing. Don't worry about it. But, while you're here, while you're listening to me ramble about nothing, why don't you go ahead and uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, right? Why don't you uh, rate and review and share the show so we can make the show grow? Yeah. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want that? I want that. And I want what's best for you. Is sharing the show what's best for you? I'm not going to say one way or the other. That's not up to me to decide. It's up to you. But anyway. Anyway. What are we going to to talk about today. Today, we're going to talk about why companies, why businesses, why people keep on doing things mm -hmm. that customers hate. And we're talking about the same things that these people hate when it happens to them as a customer. And yet their businesses and their companies and their departments and their teams keep on doing it to their own customers. That's crazy. That is insane. And we're going to talk about it. All right. So, so what are some things that customers hate? Well, 
let's get the obvious ones out of the way. Right? They hate to wait. I don't know anybody that likes to wait. Hey, is this a line? Awesome. Or, oh boy, I get to hear an hour of this hold music. That's fun. I had nothing else to do today. I guess I will sit and wait on hold and listen to this beautiful, beautiful song. Oh, it's only 30 seconds of a song on loop. Amazing. Why is it Bob Marley? What is going on here? Where am I? Well, that's a little crazy, but it is. It is true. Nobody likes to wait on hold. So if you have people on hold, you got to do something to fix that. One, probably the easiest, but the most expensive, would be to hire and staff appropriately. What does that mean? Using the Erlang C calculator, go ahead and do the little formulas and see how many agents or how many staff you need to have on the phone to cover the call volume that you expect to have. <gasps> and then that wait time will go down to whatever you put into the formula. <gasps> Amazing. Amazing. Crazy. Now, that is one way to deal with it. That is one way to deal with crazy high hold times, right? It's just hiring your way out of it. That's expensive. That might not be in your budget. So how do you get around that? One, you could have like an IVR setup where they press one to speak to a customer service rep. They click two to get transferred to another department. Let's say you're in a department and you're in a call center and like let's say 60% off of the calls that come in are vendor calls, marketing calls, this, that, and the other that don't contribute to the business in a meaningful revenue driving sense, right? Theoretically, if these people press two and they get sent to a voicemail, right, and someone actually checks that voicemail to make sure that customers didn't accidentally do it, <coughs> well, there you go, right? Easy peasy, love and squeezy. But the drawbacks of that are many. One, those customers going to that voicemail and just never calling back again, and then whoever's responsible for checking that voicemail doesn't, right? And then, you know, the friction point of actually having to press one or two, some customers are just going to drop off at that point, right? There's always a possibility, no matter how robust it is, for the IVR to die, right? And uh, some people just don't like IVRs at all. Cool. Cool. So that's, that's an option, right? That's cool. Options are good. Options are neat. But here are some other options. One, when someone's calling in and there's a hold time, you can offer through your IVR, through your hold system, through whatever you have, to call that customer back automatically. Cool. That's a good one. That one's been around for a while. And then, as soon as the uh, agent frees up, they don't lose their place in line, they automatically get a call. Now, what are the drawbacks of that? Customer may not answer the phone. That sucks. But isn't that the customer's fault? No, buddy. That's your fault for having such a ridiculously long hold time. You should get that fixed. Another option is to uh, have like a self-serve option on your website or on your uh, Facebook page. Do you have a Facebook page? A little Facebook page, Reno? 
if you don't. All right. But I'm sure you have a website. And on that website, you can have some self-serve options. Right? You can have an order online. You can have a place your service order online. You can schedule online. Maybe even have a little chat widget that is either powered by a real person or, you know, maybe a Gen AI little chat bot thingy. Right? They're not all trash. And the likelihood of someone messing around with it enough for it to, like, write a poem about how bad your company is or, you know, someone getting it to, like, curse. Very, very, very small likelihood of that. Now, it does happen. And it has happened. But, such is life. So, I don't know, man. So, that's one thing that customers hate long hold times right and i'm going to segue into more of a trades related thing but i'm sure a lot of you out there who are not in the trades can kind of understand right what do customers hate random fees what kind of random fees well cancellation fees life happens okay if someone's not going to make it to an appointment, so what? Cancellation fee? Oh, um, since you didn't cancel within uh, 24 hours of your hair appointment, I'm going to have to charge you uh, 50 bucks. And I know that's light. 50 bucks for that canceled appointment. Because I don't have any other one, any other appointments I could bump up because I'm not good at filling my schedule I'm not good at sales another fee that a lot of people love especially in the industry that I work in is the dispatch fee the service fee the fee you charge just to go out to their house doesn't matter if you're late or not you still get charged the dispatch fee the dispatch fee arena <clears throat> usually this is anywhere between like 30 and 130 bucks and it is uh, trash it's admitting that you're bad at converting sales oh uh, well it's for our time well, that's literally your job. Your job is to go out there and fix people's stuff. You don't have to charge to go out there. You charge for fixing. Going out there is not part of the fixing portion of the bill. Yeah, I know gas is expensive. I know overhead is expensive. I know... There's been some studies where conversion rates rise if you have a dispatch fee. Well, no crap. No crap. Of course they do. Because they're already paying. Might as well have you do the work, no matter how good or bad you are at sales. Here's a little tip. Get better at sales. And you won't have to worry about your little uh, dispatch fiorino. <coughs> Craziness. Craziness. Customers hate fees. You, as a customer, hate fees. If you had to put a deposit down to get a table at a restaurant, chances are, if you're like most people, you wouldn't really go to that establishment if you had to put a down payment on a table for the honor and the privilege of eating food that you're going to pay for. Or if there's a cancellation fee, if you book on open table and you can't make it because your mom got into a car accident, right? 
oh, sorry, uh, we're going to have to charge you a cancellation fee for your table. Because again, we can't fill our own schedule. And we're really bad at managing time. So this is your fault. This is your problem. Give us money. No, that's crazy. That is nuts. And you should feel bad for even considering that. Crazy, crazy, crazy. What do, uh, what are some other things that customers hate? Well, I can think of a lot. <clears throat> Being transferred around to, uh, multiple departments to multiple people and uh, none of those people can help you I know it's an old joke in fact it's overused but it is still valid because it still happens right you get transferred to one place you get transferred to another place you get transferred to this person you get transferred to that person and what's the point what's the big idea. Oh, well, I just wanted to uh, update and upgrade my package, but I also have a question about my bill. Why do you have to speak to two separate departments? Why? That's crazy. Train your people up on everything. Is that going to cause you to have to pay people a little bit more? Maybe, but then you don't have to waste time through uh, hold times and save money that way, right? Another thing that customers hate is when instead of maximizing efficiency, instead of capitalizing on being more efficient, companies cut costs. So, and when companies cut costs, who suffers? Usually, the employees and the customer. They are the ones who suffer when companies cut costs. Instead of saving money through efficiency, through automation. So, cutting costs is like, oh, yeah. My favorite is when a, co when a company is like, oh, we're customer-centric. Customer centricity is the name of the game. Look, in a meeting, we even have a chair with the word customer on a piece of paper taped to it. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, our profits are a little down. What are we going to do? Get more efficient? Not buy another yacht? No, 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 no. We're going to cut our customer service department. That's fine. That's fine. Because, well, we're cutting costs. And, well, well, it is what it is. Instead of automating some stuff, instead of maybe getting better at sales we'll just cut off the thing that we uh, said was in our lifeblood the thing that we used to say was a competitive advantage customer centricity now it's cost centricity I just like the word centricity okay so today I was reading a book. Well, more like going through a book. More like flipping through the pages. And I think, well, I think I'd share a little bit. The name of the book is Crushing the Competition with Service by, and I'm going to butcher this and I apologize, Hank Ebeling the Fourth very fancy and you know it's a pretty thin book it's not a long book but there's some pretty good stuff in here 
I guess it's uh, more towards gym owners, but it is what it is. Because here's the thing. No matter what industry you're in, you have customer overlap with a lot of other industries, right? You have a lot of overlap. If you're a grocery store, your customers have an overlap with gas stations, and they have an overlap with plumbers, and they have an overlap with, I don't know, the gap, right? People don't just shop for one thing and one thing only. There is customer overlap, and that's okay. Which means that, well, your customers are their customers. And what works in their industry might, with some tweaking, work in yours. It's okay. So, we're going to go through some. Um, now, let's take a... I'm reading from the book. Uh, now, let's take a look at some very industry-specific examples of ideas that have worked for other businesses and are some ideas that you could implement. Financial planners and insurance agents. All right. Boring. No offense. All right. Do, 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 do. Then restaurants. Have a valet. Hire more hosts. Yeah. Retail. Keep track of customers' favorite purchases and styles. This way, when new items come into your store, you can contact those customers and let them know that you just received some new items you feel they would like and are going to hold them to ensure they get the first chance to check them out. Hey. Hey, George. Hey, it's me. At the clothes store. We got a new pair. We got a new pair of jeans in. Think you'll like them. That just seems weird. But... It probably works at more, uh, not where I shop for clothes. So real estate agents, salons, medical professionals, those all in here. Car dealerships. And then we get down to trade workers. Electricians, plumbers, carpenters, etc. And let me read verbatim what it says. This is a direct quote from the book. Unfortunately, in these fields of work, CS and CX, that's customer service and customer experience, by the way. If you're listening to this, you probably know that. Tends to be lacking. You can set yourself apart in a huge way in these industries by applying some basic tactics. One big thing is to make sure you only take on jobs that you know you can actually finish and finish in a timely manner. Quote jobs slightly on the higher end so you are more likely to finish the job for less, which will look better to the customer than having to charge them more than you originally thought. Show up on time and return inquiry phone calls. Make sure to give customers a heads up with who is showing up to service their home. And try to avoid the dreaded large time windows. Nobody likes to hear you will show up sometime between 1 and 5 p.m. When you figure out the problem and fix it to make sure to break down the problem as basically as you can when discussing with the customer. Check in after a few days and make sure there are no issues with what you worked on. If there are, go back free of charge and fix it. Just the way that section starts off. Unfortunately, in these fields of work, CS and CX tends to be lacking. And then it goes on to massage therapists, moving companies. Yeah. So, there's that, you know. So, it is what it is. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Yes, the trades have a bad rap. 
bad rep with uh, CS and CX. Let's face it, it's true. But are we going to let that set the standards? No. Are we going to keep doing what customers hate? Probably. Well, probably most will. Because there's this thing. And it's a thing. And it's about convenience. And most people are only care, they only care about convenience for themselves. Not the convenience for others. If having a four hour time arrival window is convenient for them, screw it. It's convenient for the customer too. Screw it. When in reality we all know it's not. Or if they only uh, take one form of payment and it needs to be collected on site, they can't go to a little web widget on the website to pay their bill. Well, that's uh, that's an issue. That's convenient for the company, but not convenient for the com for the customer. The key is to make it so easy to do business with your company that there's no friction points. There's no hurdles because here's one thing about human psychology that I think we all need to remember. Human beings by default in general are lazy and that's okay. We will always go towards we will always go towards the path of least resistance and if you're trying to give money to a company that has resistance chances are if you f go through with using them the first time you won't be using them a second time they could do the best job in the world they could everything they touch physically could turn to gold but if it was hard to schedule the appointment if it was hard to get out there right because they gave you a six hour window and then there was a dispatch fee on top of that and a cancellation fee on top of that and paying them was a pain in the butt you probably won't be using them a second time and as we all know customer loyalty is one of the most important metrics that a company can measure and if you don't have company loyal if you don't have customer loyalty what do you have eventually you're going to run out of new customers so make it convenient to do business with your company make it easy make it simple simple have it be the simplest thing have multiple ways to reach out but not too much because that would be crazy and your customer service department who are already probably understaffed well adding too much adding too many channels detrimental detrimental they won't be able to service the customer the right way I have always opted and gone for and proclaim the art of three the rule of three voice chat self serve you don't need more than that and have it all come in to the same system 
So you don't have to toggle through screens. You don't have to open up different systems. No. Have it all in one. All in one CRM. Because it's crazy not to be. It's crazy not to do that. Right? Don't let people sit on hold. Don't transfer people all over the place to multiple departments, to multiple people. No. First call resolution. Whatever first call resolution means to you. Anything else, you're going to lose customers. And you don't want that. Not in this economy. Not in this economerino. So, I don't know. That's the episode. Stop doing what customers hate. Stop doing to your customers that which you hate as a customer of someone else's company. Make it convenient for the customer. Who cares if it's slightly less convenient for you? And get rid of the garbage fees. And that's today's episode of Caffeinated CX. I'll see you next time. Bye.